Hey, right. everybody. Welcome back to the Codex Station's Comic Character of the Week. How are you guys doing tonight? As, as usual, I am your host, Sal the Slab Guy. And as always, I got with me Dan the Man Kelly, I got Archduke Kevy, and I've got Tim the Terrible with me. How are you guys doing? Ooh. Very good. All right. All right. All right. Awesome. Awesome. So let's get some business out of the way. Dan, where can they find you when you're not here on the Codex Station? You check me out on Instagram at Dan Kelly Art. Uh, I post a few times a week, so go check it out. Give me a follow and give me some likes and leave some comments and let me know what you'd like to see me draw, what songs you'd like to hear me play. Uh, yeah, come join the fun. And then this guy right here has got something happening. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I created a group over on Facebook, thank you, and Instagram called Comic Character of the Day, where we post a different character every day, and we have all sorts of other goodies related to this geekery that we all know and love. I would love to have you guys come over, check it out, and tell me everything that I'm doing wrong with it. <laughs> and Which is nothing. I mean, I just saying. And, then... and uh, Tim, what's up, man? Oh, hey guys. Uh, my name's Tim. I'm from the Codex Station. We have a social uh, media presence. Yeah, it's right there. All you got to do is type in at the Codex Station. That's where you will find us, uh, especially where we're live streaming right now. Make sure to hit the like, share, subscribe, and follow so you don't miss awesome con like content like this all the time, every time. Uh, Sal, yeah. what about you, buddy? Oh, well, I'm not here on the Codex Station. You can always find me on YouTube under Sal's Comic Corner and also Instagram as the Slab Guy 77. Right on. All, all, right. Right. all great stuff over there, man. Check out Sal's goodies. You will not be disappointed every time. Thank it's you, sir. Thank you. Course, Thank you, sir. Every time with me, it's platinum. But with every time with, <laughs> with, with, with Sal's gold. Yep, yep. Stop it. Stop, stop it. Stop it. Making me blush. <laughs> Tim, why don't you tell them about our nice little Patreon? Oh, Ooh, QR yeah, in. there we go. That neat little code, uh, QR code right over there. All you got to do is use your smarty smartphone and scan the crap out of that, if you so please, for the price of a small or large cup of coffee once a month. You get awesome content exclusive only to patron members, including the pre-show that we just got done doing, talking about Taco <laughs> Tuesday and football and baseball and all mm -hmm. kinds of other weird stuff. That's available mm -hmm. for patron members only so there is that like i said for three dollars or seven dollars you can have access to all kinds of awesome exclusive content and more okay it's worth awesome. It. awesome do it people all right so tonight is uh dan's character he's picked Ooh. this character today so dan why don't you go ahead and introduce the character we're doing all right so thor his uh first appearance was journey in the mystery issue 83 uh, from August 1962, created by Stan Lee, Steve Lieber, and mostly by Jack Kirby, um, mm -hmm. who was a big fan of Norse mythology. His origin, he's Thor. He's the Norse god of thunder. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess if you want to go more in detail, his original origin was Thor thought, or Odin thought his son Thor needed humility, so he stripped him of his powers and his memory and put him on Earth as a human with a disability named Donald Blake, who becomes a doctor. He finds uh, he finds a cane, smashes the cane on the ground. It becomes the hammer Mjolnir, becomes Thor. And then, you know, it was a symbiotic relationship for a long time. Now we switch back and forth. Uh, as far mm -hmm. as the powers, he's got super strength. He's got invulnerability. Uh, he's got quick healing. He's immortal. Uh, when he uses hammer, he could fly. He could control the weather. Uh, the hammer used to let him travel through time. You know, he can travel different dimensions. That's my dog. Oh. Kill, kill. <laughs> That's Thor's uh, right hand dog companion. Is that right Tooth Nasher? That is yes, Nasher. absolutely. Thank you, Dan. I appreciate the reference. Yeah. So uh, there we go. That's uh, awesome. he's he's. He, He's a Norse god, so yeah. Yep. Basically, he's a god, is what you're trying to say. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, to before we get into the nitty gritty and all our different little segments, we gotta give a shout out to our sponsor, which is W Energy. So go over to wenergy.gg. Tim, if you could hit the little scroll yep, for that, I got you, buddy. All right. Go over to WGG and save ten percent on your order using the uh, code word Codex with the hyphen, and you can save ten percent on your order. It's a great clean energy drink. There's no jitters. There's no crash. It's no bad aftertaste. It's a good energy drink to have. So we we have the team here. 
Everybody's had it. Everybody loves it. It's good yes. stuff. Okay. All the cool kids are doing it. All the cool <laughs> kids are doing it. So you just do. All right. All right. For so energy drinks, nitty-gritty. ladies and gentlemen. Energy drinks. Yeah, yeah, energy drinks. Cool. Let's jump into the jump into the nitty gritty here and go on to our first segment of what works best for this character. And since we're doing a new format now, Dan, why don't you go ahead and kick us off with that? Uh, all right. So the way I like him is when he's per, um, portrayed as just a fierce warrior. Um, when he's battling cosmic level threats. Also, like I like when he's fighting alongside the Avengers too. How he really has come to see them as his comrades in arms. And um, yeah, I just you know he he's the god of thunder, but you know he's also a guy that you know that is no stranger to throwing down with everyone and anyone. So that's what I like seeing, like the big, you know, mm-hmm. the big, fierce warrior King Thor. Um, so, you know, that's that's me. What about you, Kev? Who do you or what do you like about him? How do you like to see him? I like him best when they lean heavily into the Norse mythology. When he's in Asgard and he's dealing with other gods and frost giants and mystical entities and even beautiful, seductive women, say, Enchantress, um, when they're leading into the history of where Thor comes from and what makes him who he is and how he fits best is absolutely when they lean into the mythology that is the basis of the character. Um, When they do the contemporary, like in modern times, like on Earth, walking down the street, Every once in a while, you got to establish that, yes, he's still part of the greater part of the uh, Marvel Universe. But I I like him kind of in that niche of him dealing with the things that are Asgard-specific. So that's just me. Uh, What do you think there, Tim? Uh, I think that Thor works best as a team player. Uh, I think he's awesome solo, but I think his power set and uh, his personality and just who he is as a person work best as part of a team. Uh, He is always a great motivator, uh, doesn't see himself as the leader, but fiercely follows whoever leads uh, Mm -hmm. and kind of puts everybody else in line when things start to falter, including himself. Um like you said, Dan, against cosmic level threats, he's amazing. But mm-hmm. I think uh, against like earthbound threats, he's kind of amazing too because he underestimates them and kind of gets humbled a little bit before he has to come in and deal with it the, the way that Thor deals with it by banging mm-hmm. and smashing. But uh, yeah, as, as a team player, I think he works best. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, well, you got each one of you hit one of my points. I, I like the cosmic level threats. I love the Norse mythology that they lean into, and yes, I do like him on the Avengers as a team player. And uh, you know, I do like him solo, but uh, him as a team player, he just kind of—he's that that muscle. He's that yeah. muscle that you need. You know, where you they move in, like okay, yeah, go kick his ass, and, and Thor jumps in. You know, and he's he's the first one into a fight. He's not afraid to throw down, as Dan said. And I love the constant back and forth with the Hulk to see who's the strongest. I mean, that's yeah. it, it's kind of a comical edge, but it's also mm-hmm. pretty, it's also pretty badass too. So that's what I like. That's what I like. Yeah. I was right. so, gonna say, I was that? like, is a uh, um, not as much now because they don't they haven't done it in a while. But like his early interactions with Hercules and like the kind of um, um, mm-hmm. rivalry that they had that was always right. fun to read too. Mm-hmm. See, okay, definitely. so uh, one of the things I wanted to add is the Justice League is Superman, Wonder Woman, and Batman, and everybody else is is gravy. But the heart and who the Justice League is is Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. Mm. The Avengers, Captain America, Thor, and Iron Man. Those are the Avengers. Everyone else is great. But Thor, Iron uh, Thor, Iron Man, and, and Captain America are the heart and who the Avengers are. You can't have, I can't really that. have the Avengers without Thor, right? Yep. Which is I why he's that. on the team now. 
Yep. That's true. Yep. That he is, is true. Yep. Okay. And now for our next segment, we go for badass moments. As usual, we always have some badass moments with them. Dan, go ahead and kick us off with that. All right. So the three I got, um, I got uh, from Thor issue 380 when he fights the Midgard Serpent. It oh, was, yeah. Uh, it, man, man, man. it lasts the entire, the whole issue is just a fight between him and the Midgard th- Serpent. And it's when Thor was in a weakened state and was kind of having to wear the um, the mystical armor. Mm-hmm. Um, but he still managed to hold his own. And, you know, just just a great fight from um, from Walt Simonson that wrote it. And I forget who the artist was, which I, I feel dumb for forgetting now because it was great artwork for it. Um, my second one is I got from Thor, God of Thunder, issue 11. It was the end of the um, of the storyline with Gore. Mm-hmm. So Gore made this thing called the God Bomb, which was going to explode and kill every god that ever was in the past, the present, and the future. And Thor yep. just absorbs the God Bomb into himself yep. and prevents it from going off. He absorbs the power into himself and prevents it from going off and killing everyone. And there's a scene where you see Odin like getting down on a knee and praying to Thor, you know, and like all these other ones praying, he's like, he's got it. And then right after that, um, Gore had been killing all these gods. He had the Necro Sword, which, you know, we came to find out what that was later yeah. with, um, yeah. in uh, King related Black. to Null. Yeah, the King mm-hmm. in Black. But Thor had two Mjolnirs and Thor absorbed the Necro Sword into himself while wielding two Mjolnir hammers and then blasts Gore, who's just dumbstruck at what's happened, blasts him and knocks him down. And then Gore starts kind of going on the soliloquy and Thor's like, yep, I had enough and just decapitates him. (laughs) (laughs) And it shows you there like, yeah, okay, he's a superhero, but like, you know, he's a god and he's been in wars for millennia it's just like yep you're done i'm you know there's no going to jail for you uh but my favorite moment sorry right? just the whole like you're not so different you and i speech like no but. Yeah. uh my favorite moment though and the one that instantly popped into my head when i picked this character is from um thor volume three issue three by uh it was written by j michael straczynski with mm. art by oliver koipel it took place right after Civil War, which Thor didn't have anything to do with, but Tony Stark and his group had cloned Thor and made this yes. like, robot, Ragnarok, who ended up killing uh, Black Goliath. Yeah. And he had done it because he had taken Thor's DNA without Thor knowing, and Thor right. goes down and you know was helping these people you know, in this town, and Iron Man shows up and starts giving him this speech because at that point, um, Asgard had popped up and was floating over a town in Oklahoma and right was the status quo for a while. So Iron Man, who's head of S.H.I.E.L.D. at this point, shows up and is just giving him this spiel about like, hey, you need to do this because, you know, because of this and you need to do this, blah, blah, blah. And Thor is just like, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, That's putting it mildly. That's putting it mildly. He's like, you violated me by stealing my DNA and you created this abomination. And then just the entire issue is Thor giving the most vicious beat down to Iron Man. And you're thinking like, okay, Iron Man will get his shots in because the Iron Man, he's like throwing everything at Thor. It's like this huge blast at him. And you think, oh, that must have done something. The smoke clears and Thor's just standing there. You know, when he tells <laughs> him, he's like, you're, you know, he like goes down and rips, rips Iron Man's helmet off, rips his face mask off. And his tone is like, you're about to discover the difference between a god of thunder and a man in a metal suit. Wow. And he just, just deals. It's it's such an awesome issue. And yes. at the end of it, you know, like he just he totals Iron Man. And Iron Man says, like, well, well, okay, well then we could do this. And you know, and Thor tells him he's like, I'm I didn't take sides in this and I don't care, but if you push me too far. You know, he tells him, like, if anybody shows up at Asgard and tries to do anything, he's like, I'm it's like, I'm going to rain hell on you everywhere on the earth. And you're going to see what kind of power I really have that you don't know, like you don't understand the power. 
And wow, it was just it was phenomenal. And then he leaves Iron Man's armor totally wrecked. I think they were in New Orleans. And yeah. Thor goes to leave, and he tells him, he's like, we're going to continue this conversation later. And Iron Man goes like, my armor's trash. How am I supposed to get home? And Thor just looks at, looks back at him and goes, walk. <laughs> so to me, that's that is just badass. That was just yeah. badass from start to finish. So what right. about you, Tim? What, uh, what three do you got? Um, well, here's the thing. Uh, I don't know. Wait, is it? Never uh, mind. I, I was I, on mute anyway, so it doesn't matter. Go oh, ahead, Kevin. Sorry. Uh, so I, um, I don't know how many of these, uh, comic character of the weeks we've done, but this is the A first lot. time I think where you and I don't have any of the same oh. picks oh. or badass moments here, Dan. Wow. So that's unusual. No, it's pretty crazy, right? So uh, my first choice, number three, is from Invaders, issues 32 and 33. I'm giving my kid water. <laughs> oh, okay. No, you're good. Um, Go ahead. And uh, Thor accidentally, just casually, knocks Namor unconscious. Like, Namor's like the, one of the baddest ass mofos on in Marvel. He's just accidentally like cold clocks and like oh well that was less than <laughs> impressive it was just so casual which is pretty great um my number two is from the avengers versus x-men run where four actually knocks out knocks cold the phoenix force and this is a force that takes out entire planets suns galaxies and thor is able to knock out this this entity or this cosmic entity with just a few blows. It was amazing. Yeah. And uh, from the most recent run, I got to go with Thor killing Galactus. Yeah. In the early run of the the sixth issue of the uh, most recent Thor run, Thor manages to kill Galactus. I mean, that is just, it took the entire Fantastic Four to even slow them down. And it wasn't even them doing it. They re had to re rely upon the ultimate nullifier, which erases realities. But Thor does it by himself as King mm -hmm. Thor with the Odin Force. Just amazing. So cool. Man, that what do you got there, Tim? That was sick, right? So uh, my knowledge of Thor-centric stories is uh, very small, uh, but uh, the stuff that I do know, I don't have three, but uh, I can think of two. Uh, the first one is in uh, what is part of my recommended reading, The Avengers Defenders War, the first time mm -hmm. Thor and the Hulk meet up with each other. Like, uh, uh, Thor's on the Avengers, Hulk is on the Defenders, and they're okay. coming up, and I think... I, if I remember right, Hulk is like, yeah, I don't want to do this. And Thor's like, you really don't have much of a choice. And just the whole lead up to that, the two page spread of them two knocking the snot out of each other was amazing. You got to see mm. two monsters just go to beat down. And the, the second one I can think of has to do with Thor, but has to do with Ragnarok, the mm -hmm the cyborg that they created in civil mm. war uh like what dan said where they stole his dna and they created this machine this abomination i remember reading that thinking it was thor so so to me that was a badass thor moment because people were wondering through that whole time like what side did thor choose where's thor through all of this and then the lightning comes the rain there's thor standing there with the hammer and black mm. goliath is there and he just points me all near to him and blasts a hole through his chest you're like Holy what the <laughs> what just happened here <laughs> what is going on and then come to find out it's that machine but that was intense that just yeah. blew everything out of the water that's yeah. that's what i got right now uh, i so, want to read more thor and i'm excited to get into the recommended reading so uh, like always i can write them down and get them yes. <laughs> but uh <laughs> sal what about you man what do you got all right well dan, dan stole my primary one with the uh, <laughs> Thor versus Iron Man. It, it is as epic as he described it. It's so and great. It, it is so great. And 
um, one little one little quirk that you do, you, I think you missed is uh, Iron Man goes, "Have you been working out?" And Thor's like, "No, I've been holding back." You know, <laughs> 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 it's like, holy crap, that's awesome! <laughs> so, yeah, so that, that's it. That's epic. Thor Volume Three, Number Three. Got to check that out. Um, I'm, I'm writing yeah. that down. All right. So my next one is where Thor fights Doctor Doom. This is also in Volume Three, but it's issue six hundred five. Okay. And the premise of this is something they're going to rescue someone named Kelda, and I forget the whole thing, but Kelda, Doom kills Kelda, okay? And he kind of just picks her up. He's like, are you looking for her? Well, you can have her lifeless husk. And he just throws her, and she lands on the ground at Thor and a couple of his friends, and he's like, okay, it, 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 this is it. And he just starts blasting away on Doom, and you can see bits of armor just being blasted off of Doom the whole panels. It's like six or seven panels of him just mm. wailing on Doom. It, it's insane. <clears throat> but that's definitely one to check out. And my last one is actually from a What If Secret Invasion, where Ooh. Thor oh. snaps the neck of Sentry. Oh. So he's there battling Sentry, and Sentry's, Sentry's power set at the time was he, he connected to his emotional state, and when mm. he gets more powerful, yeah. he gets connected to this void. Uh, yeah, entity, mm -hmm. and right. he starts fully being taken over, and you could they're 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 knocking the crap out of each other, and Thor finally gets him like in a headlock, and this goes snap like that. <laughs> it's almost like oh man. Yeah. So, but this, but this uh, goes into further detail about the Norse mythology. The warriors of that had no hesitation to kill an enemy yes. when it was needed, or for you know purposes of winning, you know, or something like that. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so the, the thought of killing was not a you know, apparent to him. It was like, okay, I got, you know, you got to, I got to kill the you. honorable you way to go. You're about it to was, go. It was, yeah. you know, what they had to do, you know, that type of thing. So, yeah, yeah those are my three badass moments for that, for Thor. Um, all right. So, on to our next segment is uh, our um, critiques and criticisms regarding this character. What does not work for this character? What mm -hmm. you don't like about him? And don't just say, oh, lazy buddy. Can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm out. You might, folks. Kevin, I'm All with right. you. Let's go get a beer, buddy. All right. Dan, Dan, let's go, go ahead and kick it off. Uh, so one thing I don't like, which I've noticed um, seemingly in more recent years and different runs, is um, uh, how the writers will kind of make him like he's unsure of himself. And it happens too much. And, you know, it's one thing like, okay, when, you know, when he becomes king of Asgard for the first time, like, okay, mm -hmm. I could see how you might, you know, be somewhat unsure of yourself. Because even, you know, you always knew that this is what you were going to be. You know, it's different to actually be it and, and to be that. But, you know, it, it's okay for that. But it seems like too often they, they go to the, Oh, well, you know, he's going to be unsure of himself. Like, this guy's been around for millennia. He's yes. lived through stuff and seen stuff and experienced stuff more than, you know, pretty much everyone other than, like, you know, other immortals. So mm -hmm. any time that he would have been unsure of himself, those times are way, way, way in the past. Like I yeah. said, unless it's, you know, unless it was something like, like I said, when he, when he first became king of Asgard from, you know, from Odin or... You know, even if you want to say it was, you know, when he became unworthy Thor, um, you know, when he uh, couldn't wield Mjolnir anymore, mm -hmm. stuff like that. But it just seems like I, I've read it too much in recent years where that is something on there. And I'm like, this is not a guy that's going to be unsure of himself. Um, and yeah. then the other thing is that I don't like isn't for the comics. It's for the movies and how they've turned the character just into in the movies into a total yeah. buff. Like yeah, they've yeah. Turned, they've turned him into a clown, like yeah. you I don't know, like that either. you know, and I, I I get it, you know, the the thing um, after um, you know the thing in Endgame where you know, where he was the way he was because he was oh the one big Lebowski Thor yeah because mm. he was the one that like when Thanos said you should have gone for the head like so I get that he blames himself for half the universe being gone like that's one mm. thing but you know but before that you know they wait they you know and it's taika watiti that did it in yeah. um, ragnarok and then especially in love and thunder that they just made this guy just like i said just such a joke a yeah, yeah they made him yeah. A joke, but like i don't silly. want to see, it's silly. I, don't, I don't want to see dumb frat boy you know nervous right. 
oh, I'm jealous because my hammer's here and, you know, I have my new hammer and, you know, there's a relationship. Like, I don't want to see that, man. Like, I want to see badass warrior King Thor kicking butt. And uh -huh. National you know, Lampoon's Thor. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so so those are the those are the things that that I I don't like about them. Uh, what about you, Tim? What do you got? Uh, so with with Thor, I think the thing that I like least or that doesn't work the best is alternate takes. Right. Uh, and the first thing that comes to mind is the ultimate version of Thor. Mm -hmm. uh, as awesome as he was. And I know Stormbreaker uh, in the movies w is designed off of the one from the ultimates. Uh, what was he in, in there? He was an environmentalist drunk. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I don't think that that worked. I, I get that people want to change things and they want to put their own spin and new ideas and all of that stuff. But Thor at his core is Norse mythology. He's a Norse mm -hmm. god of thunder. Uh, he has certain aspects of him that kind of need to be there that make him what he is. And when you take all of that away and you strip him down to a clown or a buffoon mm -hmm. or a drunk environmentalist, uh, it it takes away all that matters to Thor and turns him into something in name only. That's mm -hmm. what I don't like. That's where I think mm -hmm. it doesn't work. I think where he works best is when he is a machine, when he is a tank, when he mm -hmm. is a fighter that is not afraid to blast ass with the Mjolnir and break necks when needs to be, right? But when you strip mm -hmm. that down and you make him, like you said, Dan, uh, feel unsure about himself or whatever the case may be, it's not for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kevin? Um... For me, okay, so Mjolnir is Thor's hammer, and Thor is the Avenger's hammer. But when they relegate him to the status of Deus Ex Machina, or it's like, look, I, I, I hit him with the hammer, and I shot lightning at him. I, 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 I'm spent. I don't know what to do. He's a warrior. He's been around for thousands of years. Utilize him a little bit more intelligently than the one-dimensional, like, I hit hard, I, I hit him hard. I, I think that... Um, uh, I, I don't think that does that character justice. And mm. the other complaint, if I have to use the term complaint, is uh, I think that they focus way too much on Mjolnir. Um, Thor by himself is an, an amazing and a worthy and a really cool character. And yes, I understand that Mjolnir gives him a lot of his powers, but I think they focus too much on that and not enough upon Thor himself. I get that. Mm -hmm. What do you All think right. there about? Uh, I'm going to kind of go off of your point there, Kevin, because um, I think he's extremely powerful for being a god mm -hmm. of thunder and, and a warrior and all this and all this good jazz there. That if there was any earthbound threat, he he would handle it in like two seconds. He could just yeah. go all out and just, you know, it. all right, Earth saved again. All right, what's next? You know, that type of thing. You know, it, what, why would we need all the other Avengers? You know, type of thing. So that's right, why I think they... Much. That's why I think they use that one dimensional. Oh, I hit him with the hammer. Uh, lightning bolt. Okay. I don't know what else to do. <laughs> <laughs> What's that, Dan? I said it's like Superman with the Justice League. Like, why mm -hmm. does he really need all these other people? He's mm -hmm. Right. 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 Exactly. Yeah. He's he's about he's about on the same caliber. I, I would put that as far as power set would be. Yeah. yeah. You know, because I he's agree. fighting cosmic cosmic level threats, which I can understand that that's a big long drawn out battle. What does any earthbound threat have any, you know, what does any mm. earthbound issue have a threat to him? Nothing. Right. There should be no right. earthbound threat that should be, a, that should be, you know, a problem for Thor. Mm -hmm. You know, there shouldn't be. You know, that's, that's what I, that's what I think. So, anyhow, I, I think they really should utilize him more as a warrior type situation, out mm. thinking, out maneuvering, out doing, mm. you know. His, his Dude's opponent. an amazing strategist. They don't yeah. utilize yes. that enough. Yeah, exactly. I mean, exactly. Of course he's, he's been, been around forever. So yeah, he's been yeah. fighting wars across dimensions, realms, yeah. for millennia, for thousands of years. Yeah. Like you think that this guy, you know, 
he's not just you know a gun that you point like at this you know he's a right. king. he's the king of Asgard he's the king of the god right. like you right. don't think that this guy knows how to make a plan yeah. yes exactly. <laughs> I'll just uh, take the yeah. plan to Loki. Loki yeah, they, 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 <laughs> they, they definitely um, don't lean into his experience anywhere near what they should. That's Absolutely. that's that's exactly where I was probably going with that. You know, yeah. it does, they don't lean into his experience enough to have him work, win battles. Right. You know. Yep. All right. So enough about the critiques and criticisms. Let's move on to top covers. We all got Woo. favorite covers. We each got three, I think, this time. Did we narrow it down to three? Yes. Hopefully. <laughs> I know Dan, Dan's not Dan, Dan's not agreeing. <laughs> Dan, we're worried about Dan. Dan Any alternate? Dan's got, like, Dan's got, Dan's got ten. So <laughs> Dan's, Dan's like, well, I have, three, I have three sets of three. Does that <laughs> three sets of that. <laughs> All right, Dan, why don't you show us your top covers? They are coming. All right, so start us going off, slow. I'll, uh, there we go. I'll start us off on the end. Silver Surfer, issue four. Um, Classic. I mean, that's just yeah that's one of the greatest comic covers ever. Period. Not just with yeah. Thor, but ever. And whenever we eventually do a Silver Surfer episode, this one's going to be on there too. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, Dan's calling it now. Yeah, I mean, that's just that's such an iconic cover. This is um, one of those covers that when somebody asks, "What's this comic book thing all about?" You show them that. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, how do you not see that cover and not go, I've got to see what's inside here? Yep. Who, yeah. Who's the um, artist on that? Do you know? Uh, uh, Sal Bushima, I think. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. Uh, and then the middle one, I've got uh, the Mighty Thor issue 19. Um, I love how I love how it's drawn, how Thor is at the center and he's raising Mjolnir up and you see the lightning coming through it and you can mm-hmm. hear it. You, know, you can almost hear in your head that he's like, you know, shouting a battle cry, like a call mm-hmm. to arms. And you have all the other warriors around them, like putting their swords up, you know, and they're, you know, like they're getting oh, ready to go to well. battle. And yeah, and like, that's, you know, that's him. That's, you know, that's Thor. That's the king. That's the leader that's taking all these warriors into battle. They could take our lives, <laughs> but they can never take. Oh, yeah, we get it. Okay. <laughs> uh, and then the final one I got is from, uh, uh, Thor issue 373 from 1986. So, you uh, know, you guys know I collect the Marvel uh, 86 mm. um, yep. portrait covers. And to me, of all of them, this one is the best. Uh, a classic Walt Simonson one. Yeah. And, you know, just the way that it's drawn, where you got Thor there with like the Viking beard and half of his yep. face is covered in shadow. And he just has this look, you know this look on his face, this like, you know, this F around and find out look on his face. <laughs> like He's the guy you look at and you're like, that's the guy that I don't want to mess with. Right. right. <laughs> and Dan, I got to tell you, man, I totally agree with you. Those 86 uh, covers are so cool. Yeah. Mm. They are. Love them. They yeah. are. So how about you, Sal? What, uh, what covers do you got? All right. There we go. There We're we coming. Go. My there computer's go. going slow. Nice. Oh, I forgot the name of that one cover. Just shoot, shoot, shoot. It's a virgin oh, variant. It's a, it's a virgin variant of the most recent series. I didn't write it down. But damn, this is. I just <laughs> like this cover because it was the. It's like the epic Thor pose for me. The cape is in the mm-hmm. background. The lightning coming out of the Monier, Monier, and um, Molnir. Ah, came and say it tonight. But he's like landing there, and you can see like the rock or the ground breaking underneath him. That's just classic Thor nice. for me. Yeah. And then of course I got the Thor number 126 there with him battling hercules hercules this is a you know kirby classic you might say yeah you know so i just you can't go wrong with that i love and it the great. last last one i've got is thor number 27 and it's much like the first one he's standing there with the classic pose the keeps in the wind you know he's got the lightning bolts to coming out and it's the, mm-hmm. the hammers going around in the circle so it's just it looks like he's about to take off to attack and yep. that's just badass for me thor number that 27. is so cool yeah I mean, All right, Kevin, how about you? What did you got? I don't know. Um, don't Here know. they come. You don't no, no, all right. <laughs> oh, God, I'm sorry. I'm guilty of that, too. Um, King Thor, I'm not sure what issue this is. I should. I need to keep writing these down. It is um, all right. Let's talk about how awesome it is. It, yeah. It's doing, it's, it's Thor. It's in black and white, and he's slamming the, the, the hammer, and 
debris is flying off of it, and it's amazing. Uh, I'm going to skip over to the last one, and it is Thor Annual, I think number one, and it shows Mjolnir in the foreground and a lightning sparking all around him, and Thor's in the background just like as an afterthought of the power of his hammer. Yeah, and nice. the uh, little one, I, I want to kind of get into this one a little bit. Um, it's Thor from the most recent series, number seven. But the thing about this cover that really is interesting and resonates with me is this is Thor when he's the king of Asgard, and he's wearing the costume that he wore for this run. Now, what makes this interesting is on that costume is the Norse rune Vujo, which represents joy Ooh. and relationships and balance in the Norse rune um, language. Now, that is interesting because of the fact that as the king of Asgard, he lost a lot of his joy. His hammer got heavier with the, the heavy wears, heavy hold, hangs the head that wears the crown. Mm -hmm. And it represents relationships, uh, which he had to cut ties with the Avengers. So he had to cut off that relationship, and it represents balance. And he had balance before he became king between Midgard and Asgard. And a lot of that, a lot of his joy and relationships and balance were destroyed by him having to become the king of Asgard. And he, I, I find it interesting that he wears that Munjo rune to remind him of what he's lost. I may be reading into it, but I, I, I think that's kind of bloody brilliant. That's awesome. Yeah, that is. That is cool. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's it, take a it, look at Yeah, I was going to say, Tim, before you do, you do jump nope. into yours, my, my th I've looked at my issue was from Volume 5. It was a variant from uh, the number one issue. There. That right there? I had, to, I had Yeah, I had to get that in. It was, it was from Volume 5. It's an issue one variant. It's just right. amazing. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no. No worries. None at all. So uh, <laughs> let's go with what I got here. So Journey into Mystery, first appearance mm -hmm. of Thor. That cover Great. is classic it's on its own. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, I think it's just as epic as Silver Surfer versus Thor. Uh, yep. but, but that's the start of something amazing. That is, I mean, that is the beginning of the Marvel universe that we know right there. That's mm -hmm. one of yeah, the yeah, main yeah. characters. Uh, right there in the center, uh, that Thor issue, I believe that's a variant cover uh, for yes. Thor. That's the classic Thor pose. You know, the power of Mjolnir. Mm -hmm. Him standing there in his updated armor at that time, he just looks absolutely amazing and majestic. I, it's wonderful. I love that armor. Yeah, that's I great. do too. Uh, but my favorite cover is right there, the Defenders. Uh, that's number 18, I believe. Uh, that is in the middle of the Avengers Defenders War. And that cover shows you what you get to look forward to on the inside. And it's yeah. them two just kicking the snot out of each other. And it is nice. amazing and wonderful. That is peak Marvel from the 70s. That is Excellent. a fight that that is a fight that pa that fans have been waiting for for yes forever. a long time at that point yep. yeah yep. probably fifteen years at least yeah, yeah. awesome but, yeah those are my covers that's what I got great. great very cool all right now speaking of covers I know a website where you guys can buy Ooh. covers and get excellent covers like these that we just saw hmm. be shoot going on over to heroescornercomics.com you can check out this website. And you can look up back issues, you can get slabs, you can get store exclusives. And if you use the um, code word codex, that's C-O-D-E-X, no hyphen, mm -hmm. you can save 20% on that order. Uh, they're a great group of people. I do my monthly pools with them, and you should definitely check them out. Very mm -hmm. nice. You know what else we should check out real quick? Yes. Uh, the man behind the curtain himself, Jamie. Uh, he says, he's watching us while we pack. He loves us all. Uh, we're um, killing it. Much love, brother. Miss you. Yeah, we miss demand you. a raise. We're killing it. We demand a raise. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. 
killing it like Thor kills his enemies. Oh, like there you Thor go. killed Sentry. Yes. Shit. Okay. <laughs> All right, so let's get on to our essential readings. We each picked out three sets of uh, books or <laughs> novels that we want to check out. So, Dan, mm -hmm. what do we got for your readings? Here they come. All right, uh, so for mine, uh, I'll start at the bottom. Um, the Surtur Saga, it's from... Mm. Uh, mm -hmm. Thor's first series from issue 340 to 353. Now, the first um, the first half of those issues, it's not really directly part of this the Surtur saga. It's just um, you know, it'll it would have like a couple panels or one page in each one of those issues that would just kind of build up and lead into what was eventually like the big the big battle in it. But this is classic classic thor maybe you know arguably the best thor story ever um mm. you know if you're mm -hmm. a thor fan this is one you definitely have to check out um nice uh i've also got the god the god butcher slash god mm -hmm. bomb it is two mm -hmm. storylines but really the one leads directly into the other so it's it's kind of you need to read both to have the complete story uh it's from mm -hmm. thor god of thunder one through eleven this uh, it was the the one Jason Aaron was writing. This is what we should have gotten. This is the gore that we should have gotten in the movie instead yeah, the movie. Yeah. of instead of the terrible movie that we got. This is what yeah. we should have gotten. Um, yeah. It's just it's it's absolutely fantastic, epic stuff. And then the final one I got is the one in the middle, the Black Winter. It was the first six issues of the um, the Thor series that just ended yep. uh, by Donny Cates and Nick Klein and. Uh, I forget which one of you mentioned it in your badass moments when he kills, uh, when he kills Galactus. But you know the story is that the Black Winter is basically it's the entity that destroyed the universe Galactus was originally from, and now it's mm -hmm. coming to this one. Mm -hmm. And Galactus is terrified of it, and yeah. he goes down and he gets Thor and he makes Thor his new herald and gives him all this extra power. And it's just a big, it's just a big epic awesome storyline and yeah. you know it's it's uh the writing's fantastic the artwork is fantastic and it was a great way to kick off that series yeah and i also have to throw in an addendum even though it's not on here thor volume three issues one through 12 the michael straczynski run it was uh. fantastic where um when asgard came and was like hovering above this town in oklahoma Mm -hmm. that's a great one too nice yep so, yeah. awesome. so, so those are the the three slash four that i have <laughs> what about you kevin which which uh your top three recommended all right so uh for me i have let's see what we got Hold they're coming a uh war of the realms this was a uh, so I, I i i know that i go way too far with like my recommended because the war of the realms is a multi-title uh, run. It's it, it touched upon so many different titles, so it's kind of impossible to find, or not impossible to find. It, it's difficult to get the individual issues, mm. but there's an omnibus uh, that contains everything, and it's brilliant. It is everything. About, it's it's Asgard uh, against everybody. It's just it's incredible. Um, so the next one is once again. Um, Dan mentioned it. The God Butcher was uh, incredible. Um, it was with uh, uh, oh God, help me out. Gore, gore thank gore. you. Uh, it was Gore. It, it, when they introduced Gore, Christian and, Bale, uh, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes, the introduced, <laughs> they introduced what Christian Bale should have been. Yeah. In the uh, in the in the in the comic because it, it's incredible he's like so he's a threat that i think that they should definitely utilize more but who so who knows we'll see in the future and here's my last one tim you were talking about needing recommended readings yes for volume six it's the one that just finished it's 35 okay. issues and it was written 35 by issues only 35. Only 35. Oh, man. You can okay. do that. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> and it was written by Donnie Cates, and he took Thor to 
a whole nother level. It now was, I know when we were do when you guys were showing those issues on uh, After Dark and stuff, you guys spoke super highly of it. So oh yeah, it's it's bloody brilliant. Highly recommend that one. So yes, um, nice. the entire run, most recent uh, Thor Volume Six just finished, and it, it was incredible. Nice. All right, Tim, how about you? What do you got? Okay, so I chose mine a little bit differently. I chose, because I have not read much Thor, I chose mm. one that I did read, which is on the top, and then two that I wanted to read based mm. off of what you guys have told me and other things that I've heard from other people. So I'll start with what I've read first. The Avengers Defenders War. It's uh, issues of the Avengers and the Defenders in the 70s. If you want more information about it, I highly recommend going and checking out the review that the podcast, me, Jamie, and Sal, or not Sal, Sonny, sorry, uh, that we all did uh, about it. It was high praise all around, and it was an awesome, awesome read. And that is where you got to see Thor and the Hulk go toe-to-toe -to -toe with each other, and it was amazing. Um, mm -hmm. However, uh, the other two are ones that I want to read. So these are the ones, like, modern day Thor. The, the middle one, obviously, more modern than the Surtur Saga. But Thor, God of Thunder, numbers 1 through 11, that has the God Butcher story, and yep. then the, the other story that takes place to round it all out, those first 11 issues. That I really want to read. I never read it when it came out, and I just have not gotten around to it. But after tonight, that's something I'm going to be looking for. And then the bottom one, the Surtur oh, yeah. Saga. Dan, what you've been saying about it, and Sal, you and I have talked about it briefly. <laughs> Yep. Uh, I am immensely excited to read something like that. And I was at a store today where I saw the last issue of the Surtur Saga, and I almost grabbed it, and I wish I would have specifically. Hey, you should have. I know. should have. I'm kicking myself in the tail for that now. So Yeah, you but, should have uh, gotten that one. Yeah. Like I but, said, remember, the first half of it, it's not really part of the overall, like, right. the, the, the thing with Surtur. It's just, you know, it's other stories that would just be, like, you know, kind of standalone stories that would just have, you know, a little something mm -hmm. to lead up into it. Yeah, and that's perfect. I love the fact that uh, it is 13 issues. It's a big, long story, and I really dig stories like that that I can dig my teeth into and just mm -hmm. really sit down and immerse myself in the world. And with Thor, that, that's a lot of mythology and fantasy and things like that. It's all stuff that I love, and yeah. that I think I'm more excited to read than God of Thunder 1 through 11. Yeah, the uh, the okay. whole high fantasy thing is right up your alley there, Tim. Yeah, yeah, I think so. So that's what I'm going to go for. Uh, Sal. Right. Okay. Talking, what do you got? Well, well, I <laughs> wait. I see yeah. a recurring theme here. Uh, yeah. I've got you know Thor and God Bomb issues one through eleven. I'm I'm not really going to add any more to it because you guys have covered everything to this. It's definitely one to check out. Um, I'll go with uh, the Surtur Saga again. This mm -hmm. is one. Uh, it's uh, issues 340 to 353, I believe. I wrote that down, and definitely for everything, everything that's been said about that, that's a definite read. And then I went with this other one from uh, and now Galactus. Uh, this is from uh, I want to say Thor 160 to 162. If I remember right, I didn't write this one down, but I think that's what it was. But you know, he's you, saying uh, that he's persuaded right. by, yeah, he's yeah do, you know what, uh, do, do, do you know? I'm sorry to interrupt. Do you know what volume? It was the first, oh, one. Yeah, first one. Yeah, volume one. Okay, yeah. cool. Thank you. You're welcome. And uh, he's, he's persuaded by aliens to help to save their planet from Galactus, but he ends up, you know, teaming up with this other person. And there's a lot. There's another battle. He's locked in the battle with you know with another with Ego, the living planet. So it's oh, it's, 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 a, it's a pretty it's a pretty cool story. You should definitely check that out. It's a short one, like I said, one sixty to one sixty two. So you're not. You're not, you know, reading it for like five years, but it's definitely a good story to check out. <laughs> awesome. But that's what I have. And it told oh, the really origin cool. of Galactus, too. What's that? It told the origin. It was the first time they told the origin of Galactus. <laughs> that's also true. That is also true. Very good. Thanks. Thank you, Dan. All right. So now we're going to we move on to our next segment of Best Artist and Best Writer. So when we're thinking of a classic uh, writer and classic Thor images and and writers who do we go to dan who's your favorites uh for Thor, me favorite. i mean thor, <laughs> thor is one of those characters that's had you know there's been a lot of great writers but for me it's got to be walt simonson 
He had a long run on Thor as a writer and as an artist. I don't like his art on it as much, though. He does have some stuff. Um, he does have some really good stuff. But as a writer, he was just great with writing the good, like the epic stuff with, you know, dealing with a lot of the Norse stuff, but also the stuff like writing Thor on Earth when he, you know, was like, I have to, you know, have myself a, you know, a secret identity so I can, you know, kind of live on Earth and all that. You know, he's, you know, everybody that writes Thor after him is just building on what he started. Um, and then for artists, I really liked Oliver Koipel when he was, I don't know if I'm saying his last name right. But I really like the stuff he did. He, he started on it with um, the volume three when Michael Straczynski was writing it. Mm. I like not just how he drew Thor, but how he drew all of the different Norse gods um, and the way he had the classic Norse look with them, but also had a modern look uh, the way he did it with some of them, too. And the way that he drew Asgard. And, you know, I just I really like the the bulky square jawed no nonsense Thor that he drew. Mm. Yeah. Man, that's, that's good. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, Kevin, uh, what do you got? Yeah, sorry. Uh, for me, <laughs> I got to throw up. No, I I thought I thought I interrupted Dan. From oh, no, no, the next guy. For me, I got to go with uh, writer Walt Simonson. And uh, I, I'm going to go a little bit in a strange direction here for the artist. I'm going to go with Walt Simonson. Uh, <laughs> I grew up, that was my Thor, man. I love that Thor. It was fun. It was, uh, the mythology was adventurous. It had depth, it had humor, but not the MCU silly, God, why are they making Thor a joke humor? It was, he introduced um, my, my my man, Beta Ray Bell. He introduced my, my guy, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, Throg. Throg. Yeah. I loved all of these, man. These were my these were my adventures. These this these, he made my Thor. That was that was my guys. It was my, it was my guy. Walt the time and some. Yep. Okay. All right. Very good. Tim. So uh, I think uh, it goes without saying that uh, the ultimate of ultimates, though this is not my artist, but uh, the ultimate of ultimates is uh, Jack Kirby, the king. Right? Oh, yeah. oh, Everybody yeah. loves yeah. Kirby's Thor. However, yeah. that is not the Thor that I grew up looking at, right? Mm -hmm. So my artist of choice is your guys' writer of choice. That would be Walt Simonson. I remember his work from the 80s, right? And yeah. and from yeah. the 90s and things like that when I was mm -hmm. looking at Thor books. And his art style is incredibly unique yeah. um, and it's visually appealing. Uh, like I said, I haven't read a whole lot of Thor, but from what you guys are saying about his writing, if his artwork is anything like that, then I know I'm in for a treat. Uh, and that is exciting to know. However, you my... Just Oh, sorry, I'm okay. sorry to interrupt. I'm just saying, just looking at it, it's visually fun. Yeah, like, exactly. Like, ah. Yeah, and my writer of choice is Jason Aaron. Uh, yeah. Even though I haven't read a whole lot of what he's done as far as with Thor goes, I think that at that time in Marvel, he really put Thor in a higher spotlight and uh, helped the character gain more of a mass appeal uh so that is why i choose jason aaron so okay. all right so i'm going to be a little different for best writer and go with walt simon simonson simonson <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair fair choice fair. uh but but straczynski was a close second and it's really a toss yes. between the two and i went with it and went with walt on that one uh but for my artist i went with marco and i'm gonna mess up his last name javert Deverick, Jared, Deverick. Jared Dick, or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. You're I'm not touching that. Good night, folks. <laughs> yes, this that guy. This is not after dark. Jared Vic. Okay, so I, I apologize to Marco. I, I cannot pronounce your last name. You're welcome to come on the show, and I'll take any lesson you have to, to help me pronounce your last name anytime. Right. So, it's, <laughs> it's not what I said. It's what yes, yeah, so yes, the way yeah, Sal pronounced right. it. Uh, so his images were like um, uh, Dan said, uh, you know, not 
but he had but Dan said this. It's the classic square jaw, tough looking Thor mm-hmm. to me, you know, and his you know, his image just like had that essence of like King Thor to me or very tough mm-hmm. Thor or gonna kick your ass Thor type of thing. And that's what stands out to me, and that's what I remember Thor as when I used to read him. Right. Yes. Yeah. So that was okay. great. All right. That was some good so, stuff, guys. That was really good. This, this one was a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. Do you guys have any last comments before we uh before we wrap this show up? Okay. Yes. Don't don't right, let go ahead. don't Tim. let Thor Love and Thunder uh yes. Oh, yes. make your uh, first appearance or, or introduction to Thor be that version of Thor. The Thor yeah. in the comic books is very rich, very right. noble, uh, very powerful, and uh, humorous sometimes, right? He is a very solid character with a lot of history, and what Love and Thunder shows is not representative of the Thor that you should get into. Agreed. So, Agreed. I would take that off that and Talk. say um, when you watch Love and Thunder, Watch the opening scene with Christian Bale, and then turn it off and walk away. Because <laughs> <laughs> that opening guy. scene, the opening like four or five minutes was great, and everything after that is a steamy yeah. pile of shit. Oh, yes. oh there it is! Oh, wow, <laughs> the, the <laughs> whole no, he's not wrong. You're not. Look for the review of Thor: Love and Thunder in the future, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so here's my question. All right, Kevin. Uh, yeah. All right, guys, Thor. Beard or no beard? beard? Beard. I like him either way, but I I prefer the beard. I think the beard fits him because he's a Viking. Like, yeah, that's just what you think of with Vikings. You think long hair, big bushy beards, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Agreed, agreed. And the one thing, I, the one difference I I really feel that the, the comic store is much better over the MCU Thor is he wears the helmet. The helmet mm, to me yeah. is iconic. Yes. It's classic. It is yes. Thor. You show me a silhouette of that helmet, I'm like, oh yeah, that's Thor, you know, right yeah. there. You know who it is. Totally agree. He wore totally it for about agree. ten seconds in the first yeah. movie of Thor, yeah. Yeah. And, and that was it. And I'm like, where's the helmet? Where's the helmet? <laughs> you know, but you know, anyhow. Yeah. So, yeah. all right. So I think this wraps it up. Uh, Dan, did you have any last? I think we cut you off. Do you have anything else you want to add, or? No. Oh no, just uh, Love and Thunder suck. Don't watch it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Point taken. Love and Thunder. Pass. All right. Very good, guys. Uh, Thank you once again. Love you, uh, once again, I was your host tonight. I am Sal the Slab Guy. When I'm not on Codex, you can find me at Sal's Comic Corner. Dan the Man, where can they find you when they're not here on Codex? Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Dan Kelly Art. I post there a few times a week stuff like this Thor drawing that I did a while nice. ago. With, uh, I like the cape action on that. Yeah. Right down there, too. So. Go check it out. Give me a follow. Give me some likes and give me some comments and let me know what you'd like to see next. Oh, yeah. And then this guy right here. Right there. What's, what's going on, everybody? Thank you guys very much. I created a group over on Facebook called the Comic Character of the Day where we post a different comic character and all sorts of other goodies regarding this geekery that we all know and love. And we would absolutely adore it if you would come over and join up and become part of our family. And with that. Awesome. Tim, take us. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Guess what, ladies and gentlemen? I told you about our socials. Now I'm going to tell you about our website. That is thecodexstation.com. Head over there to get some merch, meet the team, and so much more. The links to all our social media accounts are there, including where you're watching this live streaming right now. Sal, you talk way too fast, and you move too fast, so I'm going to show your uh, YouTube stuff right there. I'd like to flash tonight. Thank yeah. you very much. There I am on Sal's Comic Corner off of YouTube. There you I thought go. I was going slow enough for you this time. Buddy, my fingers are old and arthritic. It <laughs> takes me a minute. Okay. Uh, I'll give you a little bit more lead in next time. There you go. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, don't forget the uh, the QR code that I took down. Now I'm going to put back up. Uh, it's right <laughs> over there. It's Patreon for the price of a cup of coffee, large or small. Uh, you get Patreon exclusive content, super awesome stuff. Get to really get to talk to your favorite hosts or host, uh, that guy down below, uh, and so much more. Well worth the time, well worth checking out, and it definitely helps us bring more content like this to you all the time, every time. There you go. Absolutely. All right, guys. Thank you again for joining us, and tune in next week for our next character, uh, which is going to be... Daredevil. 
And that is yes. whose choice? Whose choice? All right. All right. <laughs> so you're going to be, you're going to be lead off on all those uh, segments awesome. then. Right on. I'm excited about that. I actually know stuff about Daredevil. <laughs> Love go. Daredevil. There you go. All right, yeah, good. I hope you guys have a 9.8 day. Take care. Much love.